In a day, I can now tell you from first-hand experience, a lot happens on an American aircraft carrier. I'm Scott Eastwood, and this is my story of the incredible opportunity to spend 24 hours on the USS Nimitz during a training mission. Our journey started at the North Island Naval Base in Coronado, California, where we were first briefed. With our briefing complete, we boarded a COD, a COD. It's designed to ferry people, cargo and mail, to and from aircraft carriers. The COD is not exactly glamorous, but it gets the job done. Before I knew it, we were airborne, on our way to land on an aircraft carrier in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. They try to prepare you for what comes next when you hit the deck. Let's just say you come to a stop in a hurry. I was now on a four and a half acre deck of the USS Nimitz somewhere in the Pacific Ocean. The Nimitz is one of 11 nuclear supercarriers in the US Navy's fleet. It stretches over a thousand feet long, nearly 10 times longer than the Wright brothers' first flight. It measures top to bottom more than 250 feet tall, equivalent to a 28 story building. It weighs nearly 100,000 tons, about half the weight of the world's gold. Perhaps most remarkably though, all this moves pretty damn fast. Fully loaded, an American aircraft carrier can travel the seas at faster than 30 knots. The Nimitz can make it from its home port in Washington State to Tokyo, Japan in fewer than six days. And it can do all of this without having to stop for gas. Supercarriers are nuclear. Refueling happens only once in a lifetime of the ship. After 25 years, the nuclear power plants aboard the carrier generate an astonishing amount of electricity. Enough, in fact, to keep half the world's smartphones charged. While other countries have carriers, none is as capable as the USS Nimitz. And the US Navy has 10 others just as awesome as the Nimitz. The Nimitz is named after Admiral Chester Nimitz. He led the Pacific Fleet in World War II. The Nimitz is the oldest carrier in its fleet, commissioned in 1975. The Nimitz is a high-tech fighting machine. It sends a message to the entire world of what the US military can do. Behind that capability, though, is a floating city. Like most any city, it has an airport, stores, medical office, a post office, places to eat, a gas station, fitness centers, and much more. Like any city though, what makes the Nimitz are the sailors. I'm Captain Dean Swatty. Quartermaster Ashley Bishop. James Garvey. DC Douglas. Mirza Mishevich. I'm uh, DC Wanochoa. Artist to Shakima Morrison. Today, over 5,000 sailors and aviators call the USS Nimitz home. There are sailors from 50 states and 30 foreign countries. I'm from New London, Connecticut. Lynchburg, Virginia. Las Vegas, California. In the Philippines. Sarajevo, Bosnia. Springfield, Massachusetts. Sailors work what they call half days. A half day, you ask? That's it? In Navy speak, that's a 12-hour day, seven days a week. The Nimitz might find itself in the Indian Ocean or the Persian Gulf, but the sailors on board can still attend a fitness class, play football in the flight hangar, sweat in a spin class, box, wouldn't mess with that guy, hang in the library, or have a wisdom tooth pulled or a crown milled at the dentist's office. We do gold crowns, porcelain crowns, retainers. Right here, we got a gold casting machine. We got a porcelain casting machine. He's making a tooth right now. We're doing it. We're making a tooth. It's already doing it. When patrolling the sea, sailors might be halfway across the world, but they can still connect with their families. We don't have high-speed broadband internet here, but uh, sailors are still able to get off those emails each and every day and uh, kind of carry on the conversation with loved ones back home. The other day, my son, who's 13, you know, is having a little troubles in algebra. And so he takes a picture of his algebra homework and sends it to me as an image, and then I'm able to kind of go back and forth with him. While there are jets taking off night and day on the flight deck, there are sailors below deck making sure the planes can land safely. Sam. So what just happened was a bird landed. As the hydraulic fluid passes through there, the computer knows exactly how far the ram has traveled, how far the bird has traveled, how much force it's exerted, and it will seat the bow at the exact position to stop it at 90 yards, plus or minus a foot and a half every time. 
If something breaks on the ship, the machine shop below deck can fix it. The trained sailors can fix just about anything. Every single person's job down here is ridiculously important because we are the ones that make the ship work. Anything that breaks comes down here, we will fix it. If we can't fix it, I don't think very many other people can. It's taught me to be the best person I can be, without a doubt. I love every day here. It's amazing. The last one was, uh, was a real big because uh, my cameraman got too close. I had to circle back around. I pissed off if there's Hollywood people on the ship. Even with jets landing at 135 miles per hour, there are sailors doing second and third jobs. Here, they are responding to a fire in the hangar, so I got suited up to help. Thankfully, it was just a drill. From four catapults, the Nimitz can launch a jet every 30 seconds. That's me giving a shooter a hand and getting this bird airborne. A catapult is like a slingshot. A jet goes to full throttle and then gets pulled along the deck for 300 feet. It goes from zero to 135 miles per hour in two seconds. Take that, Tesla. Today, most of these catapults are powered by steam. The newest generations are electromagnetic. What seems like total chaos is actually a ballet of steel, explosives, gas, and flesh. The flight deck of an aircraft carrier is one of the most dangerous places to work in the world. It's orchestrated by the handler in primary flight operations. The handler uses a Ouija board to visualize every movement of the aircraft on the deck hangar. Working on the deck are a wide variety of sailors. They wear different colored jerseys to signify the jobs they do. These are Greg's. They fuel the jets and copters. The shooters dress in yellow. They make sure all pre-flight checks have been completed. Shooters are responsible for the safe launch of the ship's aircraft. Blue are plane handlers. Red jerseys build, mount weapons, and arm the aircraft. Brown shirts are worn by plane captains, responsible for overseeing the maintenance, launch, and recovery of the aircraft. White shirts are worn by a wide mix of deck crew. Green shirts are worn by sailors who run and maintain the ship's catapults and arresting gear. Working on the deck or anywhere on the ship makes sailors hungry. Over 18,000 meals a day are served on the Nimitz, and the menus are diverse to keep morale high and the sailors energized. You know, we, we got to make sure that everybody's being fed, and I cook for 5,000 people on the ship. It's challenging, but at the same time, I like cooking. When it comes to keeping the food tasty, the Nimitz sailors are very fortunate. The head chef worked at Camp David and the White House. Um, we all do our part in different aspects. So uh, every single day is a great experience. We have probably about 94 people under the age of 21 cooking every day, and we're an all-volunteer force. They all want to be here. They all want to serve their country. And that's what's important is giving back to them, make them smile, and make them keep doing it for 25 years. Operating 24 hours a day, the onboard laundry has dedicated staff that keeps the sheets fresh and the uniforms clean and crisp. I'm the laundry supervisor. We do about 500 officer enlisted and chief uniforms a day. So maybe around like 12,000 pounds of laundry a week. So we do a lot of laundry, <laughs> a lot. Like any city, a ship needs fresh water too. And not just to drink. Every day, the Nimitz makes 400,000 gallons of fresh water, converted from the very ocean water the ship travels in. Fresh water that is used to make steam and electricity that powers the propellers and the catapults. Each of the four propellers on the Nimitz weigh 30 tons and are 25 feet tall. While the scale is almost beyond comprehension, the Nimitz only works because of the dedication, camaraderie, and skill of the crew. There is so much that goes on on a day-to-day -day basis to make this warship operate, and I'm humbled with what our sailors do day in and day out. During my visit, I had the opportunity and privilege to meet many sailors and hear their stories. If you ever need inspiration, it's easy to find on the Nimitz. How about Ashley Bishop, a 19-year-old sailor who was in high school a year ago. Today, she was on the bridge steering the ship. They said you were the expert. <laughs> the expert. They, that something you knew like the that. whole deal, the whole ship. You're pretty much the captain. Almost something like that. Someday, <laughs> maybe. I just wanted to do something different, something more significant. It gives you a sense of pride. It gives you responsibility. Every single night when I go to bed, I feel accomplished. I know that I did something, even if it's something small. 
like we say sometimes, we do more in the morning than people do in a week. So, On a day-to-day -day basis, we can accomplish so much. We work long days and long hours just to fulfill the ship's mission. The sailors also recognize what is at stake and the responsibility they hold while doing their jobs. My 24 hours on the ship were about to come to an end. Soon I'd be experiencing the thrill of being catapulted off the deck of this amazing American marvel. During the flight home, the inside of the cod is not exactly a quiet place. I was left to reflect on this life-changing journey. I witnessed firsthand of what the best of America has to offer dedication, skill, and courage of our American sailors. It was truly an amazing and heartwarming experience. An experience I will carry for a lifetime. All in all, it was a pretty great feeling. I want to give a shout out to my mama. You know what I'm saying? I love all y'all out here. Hey, thank you. I'm Scott Eastwood, and that is In a Day on the USS Nimitz.